Success breeds success. Um, we are very committed to uh, opening the eyes of a new generation, a, a diverse, uh, richly diverse generation into the assets we have and the jobs that we have available. So this has put, I suspect, I mean, I'd really rather ask you questions, but that's okay. Uh, this has put, I imagine, careers and people on your radar you wouldn't have had before. Nobody can take that away. It's also put you on the radar of people within the Park Service, and I'm guessing beyond the Park Service, that now know you're out there, and it, you might have reshaped their thinking on what a historic preservation specialist looks like, age, uh, background. You have illustrated for them uh, your capabilities, and I think that will help those who come behind you. And then it will be up to us to make sure that we continue to support these programs I will say in our 2016 budget, which we've not yet got through Congress, but we're working on it, dramatic increase to our uh, youth programs and um, uh, outreach to communities of color. So that's reflected in the president's priorities and my priorities. It's not yet been approved by Congress, so we'll see if it's Congress's priorities or not. The Latino community uh, is already and can continue to be supportive. Is I'd say you know, uh, Hispanic Access um, Foundation, uh, Hecho, um, Latino Outdoors. There are a number of organizations that do show up, and that's so important. And I think when you do show up for these events, like Browns Canyon. Um, you put a, a face on conservation that people aren't expecting, and I would suspect you'd get a very warm welcome because there's probably, I mean, if you look at the organizations that have typically been involved in conservation, their boards of directors and their supporters are largely Caucasian and old. And I might be on the younger side, right? So um, they're looking at their support network, they're looking at their advocacy, and they're saying, we are in trouble. When I look at my career, um, the choices I've made to give back my personal time have shaped me far more than the professional experiences I've had. And when I look at my career transitions, which have been somewhat unusual, I mean, I started in engineering, I went into banking, I went into retail, and now I have this job. So what is the common thread? The common thread through all those things is volunteerism and uh, community commitment. Again, you are underrepresented in historic preservation, just as you are underrepresented in the outdoors. And there is not a federal agency that isn't interested in enhancing its diversity and also bringing the average age of its workforce down. So you are a very attractive potential employee for uh, any government agency where your skills align. Um, so as I said earlier, I think, really keeping track of your contacts that you meet in this job, not being afraid to touch base with them, keeping yourself top of mind. Um, and I say this not because I necessarily do it very well, but a lot of people do it to me. And so what works, you know, where do they get your attention? And it's not being a pest, it's being top of mind. And then I'd say if, you know, if it doesn't seem like something's coming up, uh, you know, as, as, as quickly as you might like or in your time frame, then I think, thinking about who's the broad circle of people that are involved in historic preservation. Again, they're all going to, uh, I think, be interested in engaging with you because they're all looking at an aging workforce and a desire to be relevant. And they know that if they're not relevant uh, to the public, but also to Capitol Hill, which is going to change as fast as the demographics of this country, because that's what a representative democracy is like, if they don't have advocates for historic preservation, they won't get funded for it. Being honest, 
honest about what you don't know. Seeking people that can help you. Recognizing that the people that can help you um, oftentimes are where the rubber hits the road. And they are many times in positions that some people may view as unglamorous. And having respect for those folks, they'll go to the end of the earth for you. And I'll use an example from my current job. When I get out into you know, a resource, a wildlife refuge, a national park, I try really hard to get to know staff in the resource as opposed to just around a conference table. And I've had lots of opportunities to, like e even in my free time, you know, I've gone to Catoctin Mountain Park, introduced myself to whatever rangers I might find, you know, get to know them a little bit, and I learn things about what's, what it's like for them that help me do my job at this level. There's a lot that I don't know about this job. There's things that I can learn from the person, actually, that's cleaning the toilets at Catoctin Mountain Park um, that, I, that make, it, make me more effective in this job. How do these budget issues impact that person? person cleaning the toilets was also the law enforcement ranger, was also working in the visitor center. That's what happens when you don't have enough money to operate your operations. And by the way, he had a master's degree. Well, yes, there are, and we're, we're doing that. I mean, I'm working, as I mentioned, now on the 17, 2017 budget. I won't be in this job in 2017 other than maybe the first 20 days or so, assuming I don't screw up and lose my job between now and then. Um, so that is one thing you can do. And once there's a line item in the budget, it's actually very visible to remove it. And so we've very much ramped up the youth programs broadly, and, a, and, a, and most of those are focused on uh, more urban areas and urban youth so that we're getting uh, kids at a younger age and exposing them to the kinds of work that you are now all engaged in. These are absolutely things I'm thinking about today to make it very difficult to derail a lot of the things that are going on. And the same is true basically for Indian country, which has nothing to do with the discussion here, but a lot to do with what I care deeply about. Our nation's first people have, um, not only are they underrepresented, I mean, they're, they, for the most part, we have a third world uh, communities in a first world country, and they are for the most part an Indian country. And we are working very, very hard to put things in place so that can't be undone. So that is a bit of the mindset is, you know, how do you make these sticky enough? And I am confident the kind of work that you are doing um, will mean that the Park Service wants to keep this program going and going and going.